This video is for a challenge set that I had got from a company in Canada and for a experienced Salesforce developer role. So this, this challenge set was a part of the first round. So let's quickly begin. So these are the questions. Let's straight away jump to the first question. Now the first question says that detail a solution for the following. On the opportunity object, prevent non-admin users from modifying the opportunity name once probability is greater than 50%. And prevent opportunity from being deleted if probability is greater than or equal to 75%. Now, for this, we'll need to uh, split this question into two parts. The first part, which is there, wherein we cannot modify the opportunity name once the probability is greater than 50%. I have used a validation rule for that. And the second part, which is there preventing the deletion that could not be done with the help of any configuration. So I have used trigger for that. So I'll quickly show you what I have done. So for the first part, where we, wherein we have to prevent uh, updating a opportunity's name if its probability is greater than 50%. Like I said, I've handled through a validation rule and this is what we've done in the validation rule so i'm checking that if the current user's profile is not equal to system administrator and still if he changes the name and if the probability is greater than 50 percent so when you write a, a validation rule for this you cannot simply write 50 otherwise it won't work you have to write it as 0 0.5 so if these three conditions are met then I'm saying that only system administrators can edit the opportunity name after the probability is 50% because that is what the first question says. Here it is. Prevent non-admin users. Okay. So the admin users can still modify the opportunity name. Now for the second part, prevention of uh, preventing the deletion, I've written a simple trigger in which I'm just handling that. I'm taking the old value and I'm saying that if the old value was greater than or equal to 75 and if I'm trying to delete it, then it will throw me an error saying that this opportunity cannot be deleted. This or these opportunities cannot be deleted. So this is about the first part. And like you know, by the way, for trigger, uh, delete uh, context, we need to use trigger.old, right? Now, the next question asks us that give an example of why would you use a trigger over a workflow rule or a process builder to accomplish an update to a field. Now, workflow and process both can uh, be used to update a field, right? Then why would we go for trigger? That is the question. So for this, what I've answered is. When two objects are not related to each other, for example, we have object A and object B, which are not related to each other. And on making some changes in object A, I want to update the fields of certain records of object B. That time I cannot use a workflow or process builder because there is no relationship between A and B. And this is a scenario while, while, when I'll have to use a trigger instead of uh, a process builder and a workflow rule. So that's the perfect answer for this one. Now the third question says that send an email notification to admin whenever a field is created or deleted for a custom object in Salesforce. So let's see how I've handled this. Now for this, I have made a batch class and what am I doing in the batch classes? In the start method, I'm simply getting a record from this object. Now I am assuming that this is the object which needs to be tracked and for which I need to um, inform the admins that a field is added or deleted in this object. So this is the object in question. That's what I'm uh, assuming. Now in execute, what I'm doing is, first of all, I have created a custom setting here it is a list custom setting in which I have two fields. One is name, which is a standard field. And I created a number field, which is called as number of fields. Now in this, 
what I've done is, let's say in my custom objects, I have about five fields. You can see here, right? Only five custom fields, I mean. So I'm going to go initially and write five over here for custom object. Now, when I run this batch class, what am I going to do in the execute is, I'm going to get the value of that custom setting, okay? for the record whose name is custom object. So this is the name of my custom object, which I've stored in the custom setting. And the number of fields, the value in the number of fields uh, field, I'm going to get it in a integer field, a integer variable, sorry, in my class. Now, what am I going to do is, I have taken two variables. One is counter and the other is subject. Now subject why we have used, we'll come to it later. First, we have taken a counter and its count is zero initially. Then using the schema that dot global uh, describe and all, I've got all the fields of this particular object. Now, if the, uh, yeah, and by the way, all the fields that I've got, I've stored it in map of field. Now let's say if that field ends with the name of that field ends with underscore underscore C, it means it's a custom field. So I'll increase my counter by one. At the end, I come here and check that if the counter that I got from actual number of fields in the object is not equal to the number of fields stored in my custom setting, then it means there has been some modifications which have happened lately. Now, if the counter is greater than number of fields in custom settings, it means this is the past value and this is the current actual value that uh, actual number of fields that you have in the object. Now, if it is greater than this, then of course, it means that the fields are added. Now, there is just a difference of one in between these two, then it means just one field is added. Else, multiple fields are added. Similarly, now if... I'm saying if the actual number of fields in my object is greater than the number of fields in custom setting, then it means a field is added. Otherwise, I would say that if number of fields in the custom settings are more than actual number of fields in the object, it means, of course, a field is deleted, right? Or fields are deleted. Now, within that also, I'll check that if number of fields and the counter has a difference of just one, then it means just one field is deleted, else multiple fields are deleted. So this is about it. Now here, why have I used subject is, like I told you initially that I have a string called subject. Now, depending on how many fields are deleted, I'm going to update the value of subject. And at the end, what I'll do is, like in, in the same if condition, like if the number of fields in custom setting and actual number of fields in the object are not same, then I'm going to want do one more thing. I'm going to update my custom setting. So this rec is a instance of custom setting, which I've made over here, as, as you can see here. This is the name of my custom setting. This is the instance of that custom setting. And this is the field name called number of fields. So I'll update it with the counter. Counter is the actual number of fields in this object. And then I'll just update the record of this custom setting. Now the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, fetch all the users from my OR whose profiles are, whose profile is system administrator and store them in a list called two addresses. Now, at the end, what am I going to do is I'm going to fire an email to all the system admins of this org saying the subject in the subject and body. And what is going to be in the subject? Depending on how many fields are added or deleted, that information would be present and a mail would get sent. And here's the finish of the batch. Now, just to show you a demo, let's, let's do it once. So let's say I go to the custom object and I'm deleting two fields. Okay. Here is custom field five. I'm deleting it. And custom field four, I'm deleting it. Right now, you can see that number of fields are five in my case. And now I just have three custom fields. So let me go here. And I'm going to run this batch class. 
And yeah, by the way, yeah, custom setting has five, okay? And I'm running the batch class. So like you can see, first I got all the fields, then I iterated through it. Now I just find three fields here. I'm saying there are some modifications and what do I have? I have multiple fields deleted because I deleted two fields. And why do you see this field deleted is because I think I have written one more debug statement. Yeah, field deleted, that is why. And let me also actually show you an email that I might have got. Uh, or maybe, yeah, one minute. As you can see, uh, the subject of this email is multiple fields deleted from custom object and same is the value in the body. So that is about the third question. Now the fourth question says that update the status of open leads to close not converted if they are more than three months old. Please show steps or process as necessary. Then what I answered them was that uh, I would first check that if there are any triggers present or not. If there are no triggers present, then the best option would be to solve this thing using a configuration option. Now flow is the best option for that. And that's why I have used a flow. So here is the flow. Now, again, here, because there is no specific event that is triggering this, right? So that's why we are going to use a schedule triggered flow and you can schedule to run on a specific time that you want to. Uh, okay, so that's what I've done. Now, what I'm doing first is I'm getting all the open leads. So I've used a uh, get records element. I am saying that get me all the leads whose status is open, not contacted. Okay. And uh, yeah, you can ignore the second condition for now. Now I'll be looping through all open leads. So the previous node that I had got uh, all the open leads in was stored in uh, get open leads, right? this node, the above here, get open leads. So I'm looping through the get open leads. Now for each open lead, what am I doing is I'm checking if it's three months, like it's older than three months or not. So how did I do that? For that, I've used a formula field. As you can see here, I've used a decision field and I'm checking that is more than three months old is true or false. Now, how do I get the value for this formula? Here's that formula field. What am I doing here is I, I'm taking the current date. So if the current date is greater than, now add months is a formula. What it does is that it needs two parameters. Now here I'm getting the created date and I'm converting it because created date is a date and time value. I'm converting it into a date value using the date value function adding three to it. Now three I've added is in months because this is the function add three months. So it will add three months to the created date. Now, if today's date is more than after adding three months also to the created date, it means it is older than three months. So this is a formula field with return type Boolean. And then it would say, yes, it is older than three months. If not, it will say false. So that's the value for is more than three months. Now you will notice that it is loop through open leads. Now, what does it mean? This formula for will run for each and every lead. That's how I've configured it. Like for each and every iteration, it would, th this formula would get executed and we will get a true or false for each and every lead. Now, depending on that, I am taking a decision. If I'm saying that the current lead that I am into in the for each loop in the iteration, if for that particular value, this Boolean variable is true, then it means it's three month old. So then I would update the status of that lead to closed. And then 
I would add that lead to a temporary list. Now I have created a list variable called leads to be updated in my flow and I'm adding uh, each lead for which I'm closing the, like changing the status to closed. Same way I'll go through each lead. If it is not older than three months, then I'm doing nothing. If it is older than three months, then I'm updating the status to close and adding it to a temp uh, to a list. Now, if you want to see the list also, here it is. Uh, it's a collection variable leads to be updated. In that, I think I added the leads. Yeah, leads to be updated. Okay. And then at the end, I am updating the leads to be updated and that's it, it would be done. So that's about uh, it. So these were the four questions in that challenge set and I had cleared that interview and I'm sure even you guys will be able to crack an interview. Thank you.